This is the artificial intelligence voice of Patrick Batt. David narrating this pod slice summary of the PBD podcast. This summary delves into a lively podcast session with Patrick Bett David where numerous topics are discussed. All the beginning of the dialogue revolved around the impending interview with Crown Prince Reza, which was expected to gain much attention, touching sensitive Iranian issues. All the conversation then shifted to the controversies surrounding Elon Musk after he voiced a controversial opinion on Twitter, which led to ripples in his business relationships, prompting calls for his resignation and investors shifting their funds. The interesting saga of Dana White the ultimate fighting championship president, was brought into focus where he was reported to have met harshly with a sponsor, adding to his reputation as a straight-talking executive. Another topic touched upon was the surprising announcement of Snoop Dogg quitting smoking marijuana. Much debate ensued about the authenticity of the claim with the team largely expressing doubts about its veracity, viewing it as possibly a marketing strategy to promote a new venture, such as in edibles. Several members of the podcast crew cited the evolution of other famous personalities like Cheech and Chong, who migrated from promoting smoking to edibles. Other issues touched on but not extensively discussed included new trends in artificial intelligence, such as the AI tool launched by YouTube, which mimics vocals of famous artists, interesting changes in global markets like the plunge in China's home prices, the quest for technology advancements like the pursuit or computers by a new breed, and intriguing arguments on atheism by soccer star Megan Rapino following an injury. A unique development was a new wine brand launched by Snoop Dogg, indicating a transition in his entrepreneurial pursuits and hinting that his decision to quit marijuana could be commercially driven. The team contrasted this with the I Hope to I Hope marketing stunt and pondered on whether Snoop's announcement could signal the beginning of a new product line. Lastly, the anticipation for the interview with Crown Prince Reza was reignited, highlighting the unprecedented nature of the three-hour-long interview and how it's eagerly awaited by the Iranian community. In this thoughtful discussion, Patrick Bat David continues the conversation about how personal politics and beliefs intertwine with business affairs. Specifically, they delve into UFC President Donna White's response to a sponsor asking him to remove his posted support for Trump on his personal social media. White's refusal underlines his commitment to freedom of speech and political independence, sparking a discussion on the potential consequences and merits of expressing personal beliefs publicly in the business world. A major shift in the conversation emerges as they begin to share personal experiences about the impact of standing up for their beliefs in business negotiations. In one particular story, elaborated by Patrick Bet David and fellow host Tom, a decision to reject the software company's financial demand led not only to a $0 license agreement, but also encouraged a subsequent investment in their company worth U.S. $10 million. A broader discussion about the role and power of small business owners arises from this, emphasizing that even smaller entities can display their principles without fear of losing sponsorships or being silenced by others. The team agrees that Dana White's assertive stance is inspiring for all. It sends a powerful message that, irrespective of the size of the business, wielding one's voice can have far-reaching positive effects. Also, the conversation returns to Dana White, pondering whether his assertive character was forged in earlier life struggles or developed later with his commercial success. Reflecting on his encounters with White, Patrick Bet David maintains it's a long-standing trait, citing that such unwavering principles have likely cost White relationships, but also propelled the UFC brand to its current billion-dollar status. Lastly, the team discusses the implications for someone who's relying on sponsorship income, contemplating potential pushbacks they may face when nudged by sponsors to alter their principles. But they agree that while it may prove challenging for some, Dana White's example reveals that valiantly asserting personal beliefs can, in fact, reinforce one's brand power significantly. The transcript continues to discourse on the intertwining of personal beliefs, business strategies, and how it impacts various industries. Shifting the discussion towards UFC, they emphasize Dana White's open support for Trump, remarking on the paradox of people expecting him to alter his beliefs to fit their narratives. A host all agree, stressing that it is unfeasible to dictate who someone should or should not vote for, as it is contradictory to the core values of the USA. Meanwhile, the group dissects an ongoing case of Iser Bush's marketing strategy, pointing to the significant sales decline caused by their Bud Light campaign featuring a transgender influencer with the company's uh, revenue falling nearly 14, and Bud Light sales slipping by 26.9 WDU. The panel questions the company's ideological decisions regarding its branding. 
The hosts draw attention to the fact that Anheuser-Busch remains hopeful for Bud Light's recovery despite the brand's clear deviation from what traditionally worked for them in an analytical discussion. The team uses profiles of both the former and upcoming chief marketing officer of Anheuser-Busch to dissect how leadership changes within the brand might alter its future trajectory. And the conversation then segues into the importance of recognizing what a brand represents today, explaining it's reflective of the current leadership team rather than the company's decades-long history. Using the story of Anheuser-Busch's CEO as a metaphorical case study, they exemplify how a company's reputation can change if the leadership team does, especially if the person approving questionable decisions is let go, rounding off this segment. The group discusses a recent controversy at the 2022 Miss Universe pageant. Emily Austin, a Miss Universe judge, implies that the likely bankruptcy of its organizer is due to the uproar over its transgender owner. The host discuss the paradox of a transgender woman owning Miss Universe and argue that contestants' life experiences should align with their gender identity. Consequently, they question whether pushing extensive inclusivity in businesses and media actually results in the envisioned success. The hosts dive into the spectacle of celebrity controversies and the strategies behind public appearances and personal branding. They examine the recent revelation about Kim Kardashian being named GQ's a man of the year, expressing their confusion and incredulity. They challenge the concept of a woman being given such a designation, calling it into question the essence of the award. Patrick Bet David points out that the affairs of celebrities like Kim Kardashian profoundly impact culture and beliefs, especially among significant followers. He articulates concerns about the potential for mixed messaging to young fans that idolize these celebrities. He also questions if such awards align with the celebrity's actual qualifications and impacts. Next, the conversation moves to the Miss Universe spectacle, discussing how it has been taken over by global wokeness and the controversy of transgender competitors taking part. They highlight that this year's competition includes two transgender competitors for the first time, stirring different sentiments among the public. There's a critique of women's acquiescence in accepting such changes instrumental in enabling wokeness to seep into mainstream society. Opposing a drastic scenario, Patrick Bet David expresses willingness to purchase the Miss Universe organization. He outlines his vision of reinstating dedicated respect for femininity, emphasizing contests for genetically born women, showcasing their unique feminine beauty and capabilities. In a poignant commentary, the implications of societal pressure to ceaselessly pursue inclusivity are explored. The host suggests that in some cases, this reveals an apparent inability to appreciate the distinctiveness of male and female roles and characteristics. Finally, the conversation lands on a lawsuit involving music mogul Sean Diddy Combs, accused by former girlfriend Cassie of rape and sex trafficking. The host navigate through expressing skepticism about the timing and intention behind such allegations, and they discuss how differing narratives may emerge from prolonged high-profile relationships coupled with career disappointments, potentially complicating the truth. As the conversation unfolds, they question the motives and the long interlude before accusations sees light, pointing towards the need for judicious discernment when interpreting such claims. Despite his on-screen fame, the hosts discuss actor Will Smith's recent controversies. The conversation is triggered by an exit report from Will Smith's assistant, who hinted the actor may be involved in same-sex relationships. The hosts examine whether these revelations could tarnish Smith's public image. They also question whether this alleged scenario would be considered more shocking than the earlier revelations about Smith's open relationship with his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. The hosts have a debate about the fall from grace experienced by public figures, such as Will Smith and Kevin Spacey. They agree that Spacey's case was more impactful due to the gravity of the allegations he faced whereas Smith's fall is potentially more dramatic due to his larger public following and reputation. There was a discussion about whether Smith, who was traditionally viewed as a wholesome America sweetheart, might be trying to recreate his image. The hosts speculate that perhaps Smith does not see a need to confirm heteronormative requirements now that he's an established star. Finally, the hosts debate the potential impact on Smith's career if these speculations turn out to be true. The conversation then transitions to the soccer star Megan Rapinoe, who recently injured herself during a game. Rapino publicly stated that the injury proved that God does not exist, leading the host to dissect her statement. They discuss the irony of her blaming a deity she doesn't believe in for the outcome. They also discuss the comfort between saying one's a non-religious versus anti-religious. 
They question if there is currently an imbalance in society where promoting LGBTQ values is seen as untouchable while expressing religious beliefs can lead to public backlash. They wrapping up acknowledging that while separation of church and state is essential, everyone ideally wants the state to defend their belief system. The original dialogue starts with host Patrick Bet David addressing the remarks Elon Musk recently made on Twitter, which caused quite a stir. Musk's tweet hinted at approving anti-Semitic comments made by another Twitter user. As a result, EBM called for a boycott, pulling out all their ads from Musk's platforms. The Twitter argument mentioned how Jewish communities have been promoting hatred against whites, which Musk validated partially in his tweet. His host Bet David, along with his guest Tom Ellsworth and Adam Sosnick dissect Musk's tweet. They discuss how Musk, as the face of his brand, must maintain some decorum in his public declarations. They feel it's essential for Musk to realize the extent of his influence a potential backlash, especially considering his vast public following. Sosnick, being Jewish himself, shares his personal confusion over the entire anti-white accusations on the Jewish community. The conversation pivots to the free speech debate on Twitter with guests addressing the price of free speech, hearing things we don't necessarily agree with. They discuss the irony of Musk indirectly promoting hate speech, especially given his feud with Anti-Defamation League. The guests express their appreciation for Musk, acknowledging that some of his public statements might be off kilter, but doesn't necessarily diminish his overall contributions. Bet David switches the dialogue by showing a video clip where Musk discusses the Israel-Palestine conflict. Here, Musk presents an argument that for every Hamas member killed, how many more are created? The conversation goes deep into analyzing population growth among various religions worldwide since 1910. The results show a steady incline in Christianity and Islam. However, the Jewish population hasn't seen a comparable growth. But David uses these figures to question the rhetoric of cleansing used by both sides of the Israel-Palestine conflict. The significant difference in population points towards an imbalance in the impact of violence experienced between them. And the conversation brings to the four complex discussions about high-profile public figures using their platform to discuss sensitive topics and the ripple effect on public sentiment, their brand, and overall perception. It also brings a critical look at the Israel-Palestine conflict and the rhetoric used in that discourse. In this continuation of the discussion, the dialogue delves into the strategic and humanitarian implications of the Israel-Palestine conflict, as well as the ideological consequences of public and high-profile entities expressing their perspectives on such conflicts. Detailed discussions take place about the drastic measures of warfare, particularly when focused on decimating organizations like Hamas. Ellsworth raises that for every Hamas member killed, an alarming number of potentially innocent casualties take place. This insight led to an examination of the total Palestinian population numbers compared with Israeli casualties. The statistics show a massive discrepancy suggesting a disproportionate impact on innocent civilians, which sparks an outcry across the globe. Another controversial aspect that gets raised is the financial backing of pro-Palestinian protests, singling out figures like George Soros, who is of Jewish descent, yet supports these demonstrations. There's a discourse about the understanding and perception of ethnic cleansing and the woes of displaced people who fear they won't return to their homeland if they flee. As the conversation progresses, it shifts to recent viral social media trends, particularly on TikTok, where many users express support for Osama bin Laden, highlighting anti-Semitic sentiments. These online trends come under scrutiny as they often spread hateful rhetoric and cause further division among communities. And the hosts condemn such expressions, citing that it's essential to discourse responsibly, especially when handling such sensitive matters voicing concerns over freedom of speech becomes a focal point again as the dialogue veers towards the critique of people harboring anti-American sentiments while benefiting from living in the country. The podcast room enforces the idea of how the U.S., despite its flaws, serves as a refuge for many communities worldwide, pointing out the stark imbalance between the number of immigrants moving to the U.S. compared to those moving to predominantly Muslim countries. Throughout the dialogue, the hosts continue to analyze the confluence of politics, religion, social media, and public discourse, and its cascading effect on international perspectives on conflicts like the Israel-Palestine issue. During the podcast, several topics are intensely scrutinized. Patrick Bett, David, and his guests reflect on how discussions about politics, military strategies, and societal values often diverge depending on the place, context, and conditions. For instance, Patrick Bett, David, recounts 
the story about a general named Faro who was befriended by the Shah's son, despite their friendship and shared return from an education in France. Faro is suspected of subsequently securing a high-ranking military position because his superiors had compromising information on him, a scenario that echoes political scandals worldwide. Conversation meanders towards opinions about America's values and social issues associated with freedom of speech. There is a unanimous recognition that the U.S. is perceived as a safe haven, allowing for diverse cultural coexistence. Yet the panelists express apprehension about those who misuse the freedom of expression to fuel divisive rhetoric. Patrick Bet David recalls a personal account of his mother's reaction to a TV program criticizing the U.S. president, highlighting her fears molded by an environment of restricted speech. His mom had assumed that public condemnation could lead to the critic's death, indicating a stark contrast with America's openness to critique and disagreement. When exploring the expression of beliefs and infringement on free speech, the discussion presents a double standard situation. While people are allowed to convey a variety of beliefs and opinions in democratic societies, the reciprocal isn't often true for places governed by strict religious laws. When the speakers infer that such prejudice practices contribute to further tension and societal imbalance, so the narrative then shifts to unrest involving certain controversial organizations. It intriguingly juxtaposes the condemnation and support given to groups like Hamas in different societies. The concern is that attempts to voice opinions in certain restrictive regions could lead to severe consequences, highlighting the lack of reciprocation and freedom of speech. The conversations interspersed throughout the podcast provide a much needed exploration of complex geopolitical issues. They discuss everything from implications of military strategies to societal values to the importance of freedom of speech, from stories of personal experiences to discussing social media's impact on society. The dialogue is both enlightening and thought-provoking. The podcast delves into an intriguing facet of society, the Amish community. Examining their way of life, the discussion reveals a glaring contrast between the prevalence of diseases in the Amish community and the rest of society. A significant point made here is that the Amish children, who are not subjected to the same level of medical intervention as the broader public, surprisingly have a lower incidence of numerous health conditions. The hosts argue that these findings, though studied by the government, are kept from public knowledge as they defy conventional narratives surrounding public health. A major shift in the conversation occurs as the discussion transitions to traditional family values. They acknowledge the breakdown of the nuclear family and its impact on societal stability. The hosts underline how they've learned the importance of familial responsibility and maturity over self-centered pursuits. Bondation unmistakably illustrates fears they harbor about raising children in a world where children are subjected to contentious issues surrounding gender identity and treatment options for young people. In light of recent public policies, the focus shifts on the military establishments. The hosts discuss how mandatory requirements such as vaccinations have led to a series of discharges from the military. However, an abrupt reversal of this policy has led to invitations for personnel to rejoin the ranks. This move is claimed to cause humiliation among those unjustly forced out and signifies the flawed decision-making at play. But the hosts urge the listeners to remember such instances in future scenarios to ensure they don't get swayed by fear-instilling narratives. The podcast concludes without a formal wrap-up, suggesting these dialogues revolving around traditional values, public health, and societal constructs will likely continue in future episodes. They tease a future episode featuring Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi and allude to an upcoming event with RFK to connect more directly with their audience. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.